Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are in Act 5 of Troilus and Cressida. We're in Act 5, Scene 2, and we get to hear from Troilus today. Because the, the fight part, or at least a big piece of the fight part of this play, has already happened. Um, Ajax and Hector did their fight, but they decided that they weren't going to fight to the death because they're actually related. So Hector got to go to a whole bunch of dinner parties in the Greek camp instead. Or I don't know if it was like one dinner or sort of like one of those around the world dinners where he would go from tent to tent. It was all just basically in one night. But Hector got to go and dine with all the Greeks as if they've been really good friends all along, except for Achilles, who's still bitter about this whole thing and really, really, really wants to kill Hector, even though he's in love with Hector's sister. So that's going to get interesting in just a little bit. But at the moment, we're focused on the love story part of it, because as as the Greeks were saying goodnight to Hector and sending him back to Troy. Remember, Troilus had come along and you and had asked Ulysses where he might find Calchas's tent because you know he wants to try to see Cressida. So as they were all saying goodnight to Hector, Ulysses was like, follow that guy, he's gonna go to Calchas's tent, meaning Diomedes, because remember when Troilus when the when the great exchange of Cressida for Anthenor happened, uh, Troilus had said to Diomedes, you know, look after her. And Diomedes was like, you bet I will. And Troilus was like, don't be stepping to my woman and all that sort of blah, blah, blah type stuff. So Diomedes is at the moment trying to court Cressida. Ulysses knows this. He's like, let's follow because he'll take us to Calchas's tent and then you might be able to see Cressida. So at the end of the last scene, they went off to do that. And what's also important to remember is that when Troilus and Cressida did their weird parting where they were sort of fighting over whether or not they were going to be true to each other and what that even means, they did exchange tokens of their love. She gave him a, a glove and he gave her a sleeve. And it, it is entirely possible they meant like sleeve. I mean, it's, it probably wasn't attached the way that mine are right now, but she did. It's, it's a token of clothing, a piece of fabric, it, similar to a handkerchief, I guess, that she could have given to him, but she gave him a sleeve. He gave, er, he gave her a sleeve. She gave him a glove is how it went. But anyway, so she's had this sleeve of Troilus's, which is important to remember because at the top of Act 5, Scene 2, we have Diomedes showing up at Calchas' tent and they're like, hey, you know, bring her out and let me talk to her. And Cressida comes out. Meanwhile, Ulysses and Troilus show up and then a little bit behind them, Thersites comes in. So Ulysses and Troilus are spying on this interaction between Diomedes and Cressida and Thersites is over here like spying on the whole thing. So Diomedes and Cressida are being pretty friendly with one another and he's like, are you going to do what you promised me. And she's like, don't hold me to my oath and that sort of thing. While over here in the intermediary camp in this situation, Troilus starts fuming because she seems to be encouraging Diomedes advances. So Troilus is like, no, what's going on over there? And he starts getting a little bit loud in his protestations. Um, and Ulysses the whole time is trying to quiet him down. He's like, we're not even supposed to be here. You got to shut your mouth because they're going to like, you're they're going to know that we're here in about 30 seconds. And then Thersites is back there, you know, like Waldorf and Statler from the Muppets. And he's just making comments on the whole thing and loving that this whole thing is killing Troilus and loving how untrue Cressida is currently being. So the Cressida and Diomedes interaction, she's like, you know, you, you can't hold me to that, but come here. And he sort of leaves and then he comes back and she's like, she whispers something in his ear and he's like, do you promise that? And she's like, I do. And he's like, well, then I need some sort of token from you to know that you're serious. She's like, I'll go get one. And she runs inside and Troilus is sitting over here fuming and she comes back out with the sleeve that Troilus had given her and she hands it over to Diomedes. And she's like, here, this is my token. And then she's like, oh, crap, he loved me that gave me that, give it back. So she snatches it back, but Diomedes is like, no, you gave this to me now, it's mine, and who gave it to you anyway? And she's like, I won't tell you, I'll never tell you who gave it, but I need it. And Diomedes is like, no, it's mine, and if you're not going to tell me who your previous lover was, I'm going to wear this in my helmet on the battlefield tomorrow, and whoever comes at me with the most vigor, I'll know that that was your ex-lover, and I'll be able to kill him because of that. And Troilus is over here still like fuming and, and very hurt, 
by this whole thing because, you know, this was a token of his love that he had given to her that she's now given to another man. She tried to get it back, but she was very unsuccessful at that. So anyway, that whole thing happens, and then Diomede says goodnight, and he leaves, and Cressida's like, oh, I'm kind of torn, because, I mean, uh, Troilus is still in my mind, but that Diomedes, he ain't bad. Oh, women are so fickle. And she goes inside, and now we get to focus on the conversation between Ulysses and Troilus, where Troilus is like, it's over, it's just done. And, and Ulysses is like, so why are we still here? <laughs> and Troilus is like, because I, I have to, you know, relive what happened and try to make sense out of what happened, because it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And like, curse all of our mothers for making women, because women turn out to be untrue and horrible like Cressida. And, <laughs> And Ulysses stands up for mothers everywhere. He's like, what did she do to offend all of our mothers? And Troilus is like, she didn't do anything as long as that wasn't Cressida. And Thersites is like, oh, this is going to be fun. And Troilus continues on by saying, this she? No. This is Diomed's Cressida. If beauty have a soul, this is not she. If souls guide vows, if vows are sanctimony, if sanctimony be the God's delight, if there be rule in unity itself, this is not she. Oh, madness of discourse that cause sets up with and against thyself by foul authority, where reason can revolt without perdition and loss assume all reason without revolt. This is and is not Cressid. Within my soul there doth conduce a fight of this strange nature, that a thing inseparate divides more wider than the sky and earth, and yet the spacious breadth of this division admits no or effects for a point as subtle as Arachne's broken woof to enter. Instance. Oh, instance. Strong as Pluto's gates, Cressid is mine, tied with the bonds of heaven. Instance. Oh, instance. Strong as heaven itself, the bonds of heaven are slipped dissolved and loosed, and with another knot five-finger tied, the fractions of her faith, orts of her love, the fragments, scraps, the bits and greasy relics of her oreaten faith are bound to diamond. So he's distraught, and I don't think that we've gotten to see him this distraught. I mean, we've gotten to see him passionate in fighting for Helen, but he wasn't, I don't know, the, the whole parting with Cressida earlier was weird, and then he got all territorial and this and that and the other thing, but here we get to see him maybe stripped a little bare. He's so far in denial about what he just witnessed that he's like, that can't even be Cressida who was there. That has to be somebody else. Like, I know that it's her. I can see that it's her. And it doesn't make sense in my soul for that to have actually been her. And my soul is, is fighting with itself to try to reconcile what I know of Cressida and what I just saw Cressida do. You know, she gave, she gave my sleeve away, <laughs> basically, is what it boils down to. And then he, he gets to you know, the, the true sadness of it, that they had this bond that has now broken and the, the pieces that were left of Cressida now belong to Diomed. They no longer belong to Troilus. And Ulysses tries to offer some words of comfort, but uh, Troilus isn't quite done feeling sad. So we'll get to hear a little bit more of that in tomorrow's monologue. I'll see you then. Mwah.